Welcome everyone to a City Council meeting for Monday, June the 11th, 2018. If we could have a roll call, please ma'am, to establish quorum. Melissa Green? Yes. Vicki Schneider? Here. Bob Thomas? Here. Christy Kendrick? Here. David Mitchell? Here. Uh, Mr. McClung is absent with notice. We have five. All right, if we can stand and pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All right, corrections. Yes, sir. Oh, no, an addition. Or additions? Yes, sir, addition. Uh, under new business, whatever number it'll be, uh, the Lake Leatherwood tax. I'll second that. Nine. Is that for discussion, David? For discussion. Okay. Okay. It's new business. Let's make it yeah. nine. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, I'm having a real problem with all the additions we're doing that the people do not have a chance to be notified of, whether it's discussion or vote is immaterial. I was going to have added a discussion of adding to the agenda. Um, you want to tie everything in together or make that a separate entity? should be a separate entity. Okay, then I would like to add a discussion of turning in late stuff because I've been getting an awful lot of calls from the people. Okay, so that's, I'll second that, Mickey. Thank you. Late stuff. Anyone else? Yeah. Late items on the agenda? Is that yes, late right mm -hmm. items. Okay. Not hearing anything else, can I? I also need to add um, item of the Ellis Grade Repair Ordinance, Emergency Ordinance for Repair of the Wall on Ellis Grade. Okay. Would that be under new business, for That'd be under new business, yes. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. If not, all those in favor of the agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Get a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Any additions, corrections? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the minutes as submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So I'm moved. opposed. Yep. All right, 4-1. Uh, as far as commission reports and uh, expired terms go, we have some vacancy on the planning commission, uh, also on the hospital, and on the cemetery. So any citizens who's interested in those, please contact uh, City Hall and we can get you an application going. Uh, public comments. Please limit your time to three minutes and it seems like we have a lot of people here tonight. And normally I wouldn't be reading off of something, but I have a few things I really want to make sure I bring up. First of all, I'd like to invite each and every one of you to join us, the community. I feel that as city council, you should be aware that we have several benefits, grand openings, celebrations of life, outreach programs, and general celebrations. And some of you I recognize from being at those things, and some of you I've never seen at those things. And I think that it's very important as city council to mingle with the community so that you know exactly what we need and what this community could benefit from in a positive way. I also understand that you have the right to amend the agenda, but that the point is to be able to add things that require immediate attention. The process is designed to have a published agenda for a participatory government. Adding non-urgent agenda items undermines that entirely. I encourage you all, the mayor especially, to remind City Council of that and stop them from using this as a normal practice. City Council, why is it that important items are consistently added to the agenda at the meeting with no notice to the public? Example, how does a printed and posted agenda not show a vacancy on the Parks Commission? How is it not amended to show the vacancy at the onset of the meeting when the agenda is approved? 
How is it that an application to fill the vacancy is announced without any notice to the mayor during the meeting and without prior discussion to the parks chairperson? How is it that a quick motion to approve the nomination with a quick second is voted without any discussion? Exactly how does that work? Mr. Mayor and City Council, we'd like to know how that works. There was no emergency to fill the vacancy at parks and there was very little time given for anyone to apply. Please explain this to us because without an explanation, this sure feels a little bit like collusion. It's up to us as a community to promote positive, healthy, and inclusive change in our community. The only way to do this is to have kind-hearted, selfless people in office. That means we all need to gather resources, run for office, and please show up to vote. I look forward to seeing everybody at the November election. Hello, Ferguson Stewart, 7 Harvey Road, Eureka Springs. Um, I'm currently one of your sitting park commissioners on position four. I'm also running for justice of the peace, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here as a concerned citizen on the case of rate of pay and the compensation we're giving our employees. I have interviewed a lot of employees, and we've lost a lot of employees due to the budget freeze. I really ask you to look in your heart and look at you and how these people are paid and the compensation rate, which is substandard. Uh, we need to hold on to those critical employees. They are our real assets, not the trucks, not the multi-million dollar fire truck, but those assets. We've lost, we've lost three police officers. We've lost four public works. We've lost many, many critical employees. We've lost another dispatcher. We really need to increase the rate of pay and the compensation rate for our employees. Thank you. Good evening, Council. James DeVito, 5 Center Street. Uh, to quote Will Rogers, everything I know, I read in the newspaper. Um, I understand that Council's uh, entertaining, uh, hiring an architect to look for space in this building that we're in tonight uh, for meeting rooms. I hope that in your search for a solution to this problem that you don't discount what the uh, uh, Mayor Barry drew up about 20 years ago, which is going into uh, the area where the uh, restrooms are on the sidewalk level. Uh, even though we can't find the prints on, on that, I'm, I'm well aware that it was a project that encompassed a meeting room with 50 people and two uh, offices. Uh, and I haven't looked at the elevations from the basement up, but if that's a possibility, you eliminate the need for an elevator and you eliminate the need for restrooms because there's already restrooms in close proximity to that location. So I hope you look at all alternatives because it's possible that you could have two floors instead of just one in the basement if you do this right. Uh, the other topic I want to talk about is something I mentioned before. And I will quote from yesterday's Democrat Gazette, and it's about the uh, eco-village that's going up. And this is uh, the second paragraph in our article there. The first of 26 houses planned for the eco-village, a low-cost rental housing community in a tourist town that has a dearth of affordable housing. We're a community of artists, musicians, and service sector employees, and affordable housing is very important to the livelihood of this community and to the identity of the community. And if we lose the ability of our people to live in town, we're going to lose an asset that draws people here. It's more than just uh, doing what's right. And I see that on your agenda you have another six-month moratorium proposed that makes three six-month moratoriums in a little over two years. Uh, you have a complicated, outdated process of uh, dispersing CUPs, which is an encroachment of commercial into residential districts. And I ask you as council people, why do you think that there needs to be one more conversion of a residential property to, to commercial use in this community? I think it's an affront to the people who live here. I think it's your responsibility to be proactive. And I think the wise alternative to the CUP is to do away with the CUPs and if you feel that it's so important for a commercial property to be located in a residential zone, then you do it by rezoning. You don't do it through a CUP. Thank you very much.
Dorothy Curtin. I live out on Rockhouse Road. This is about the anniversary of my first visit to Eureka Springs 17 years ago. Well, I've seen a lot of change, a lot of good change, a lot of really crappy change. And as I listen to everybody speak today, I kind of hear the same thing. I love it here. I do. But we are not taking care of our people here. We're not. Not our people that live here and not really our visitors. You know, I was coming home from Nashville last week and stopped to flip through Facebook as I took a break and, and I hear that the City Council is once again talking about disbanding the Parks Commission. It is the only department or commission that has real expansion and change and added really super improvement to our town. It's inviting people to our town and it's making us get out and live a healthier way of life. You know, this part of the City Council has been trying to take our green space since they got on the board. We need to stop this. We need to leave our Parks Department, our Parks Commission like it is because they are doing their job. We need to allow them to work with the community center. I've lived a lot of places from the West Coast to here, between here and there, and there is not anywhere in the country that your parks people and your community centers are not working together to take care of their local residents. Just ask you, please, the one place, you have your hands full with all the other things in the city that need to be taken care of. We still have a crumbling infrastructure. We have another new hole over here. Let's take care of that. The city needs to take care of those things and let the people who take care of parks take care of parks. Thank you. Well, I'm Glenn Crenshaw with the Community Center and All Seasons Real Estate. I wanted to come first off to thank Mickey and Kim Stryker and the mayor for coming to the Community Center opening on Saturday. It was a tremendous success. We had over 200 people show up. We sold over 50 founding memberships to the people that are really interested in getting involved in the project. The kids were lined up around the splash park and we're having an absolute ball. This is exactly what we've been working really hard to make this happen. And in reflection with that also, I've been thinking about all the other stuff going on in Eureka in this next seven day period of time. We've got Echo Village that's kicked off and it's actually a reality now. We've got the parks downhill that's going to open Thursday and the community center. I would love to see any other town in the state of Arkansas that can say they did those three times, three things in a one day, in a one week period of time. I just think it's amazing. And everybody, including all the donors and volunteers, should be thanked. Thank you. Hello. My name is Robin Miller, and I live at 5 uh, Washington Street. I am here in regards to uh, the red curve that's going to be going in. I live at the corner of Point Street in Washington, and it's already been proven that a fire truck cannot make it into Point Street. And I happen to think that public safety in our homes mean more than a couple of parking spaces. Uh, there is an empty house that sits behind 7 Washington Street. A transient can get in there. They could start a fire, and the city would not be able to put it out in a timely fashion. And so I'm just saying, please, uh, let the fire department be able to get to Point Street and to the homes back there and to my home, too. I live in a historical building. It is the old Christian Science uh, Church and I would hate to see that go up in flames over something silly because the fire department could not get in there and that's all I have to say. Thank you. It's Bob Shusinski, 46 Hillside Avenue. Uh, uh, you gave a handout here with regard to a uh, newspaper advertisement in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Northwest Arkansas edition here. And uh, I just wanted to hand it out because I understood that the uh, uh, CAPC was no longer going to advertise locally. And here we have an ad in our local paper asking our locals to visit Eureka Springs. I think that's a little bit of a waste of money if you ask me. More importantly, they list all the things you can come here 
to do, and there's not one word mentioning you can come here to get married. I thought this was the wedding capital of the South. Well, unfortunately, it no longer is. As a matter of fact, our weddings at the Angel of Rose Hall are down 50% in just the last three years. And it won't be too long before there are no longer people coming here to get married. And as a matter of fact, the word that I last heard that even uh, the One Crown is having trouble filling their spaces for weddings. Uh, that is, used to be a nationwide destination for weddings, and we're losing that also. The reason is because the city apparently is not going after weddings well. At the same time, everyone else in the country is actively seeking weddings because they generate a lot of money. The other thing is, uh, at the end of my last discussion, I mentioned for the umpteen time the need to allow planning to have access to an attorney to seek legal opinions. And following my uh, talk last time, uh, the uh, chair of planning got up there and mentioned uh, the need to repeal an ordinance because she didn't feel it was necessary to provide a, a uh, notice in the newspaper and a hearing with regard to proposed ordinances. And that's why I gave you that handout there, which I think if you read it will prove my point that planning is definitely in the need for competent legal advice. And one way of doing it is to have their questions sent over here and then you can ask the city attorney for advice and then you don't have to have him attend these hearings. And maybe that's one solution. Anyway, and then regard to the proposed ordinances that are coming up. As I said time and time again, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with the code. It was written by a competent attorney. The problem is that you don't read and apply the code as written. The perfect example is the variances granted to the 200-foot rule. Now you want to expand it to 200 feet in every direction. It isn't going to make any difference because you'll grant variances. Look at all the variances you grant, at least three of them to the 200-foot rule in the past. And if you read the code, what does the code say? No variance shall be granted unless the applicant can prove that there's no other viable use for the property. Show me one of those instances where variances were granted where they met that code requirement. Well, I'm down to 18 seconds again. Anyway, um, that's all I can say, unfortunately, except I've already told you my uh, opinions with regard to this ordinance, and, and, and as to why it's totally unnecessary. You need to enforce the laws as they are written. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Henry Brandstetter. I live at 8 Washington, and I just wanted to come in and address you all. Um, the neighbors that live on the Washington Point Street area, myself and the other two people here represent the three houses that are at that intersection. And we all want to make sure that we're not trying to make concessions for parking out there. Uh, we're trying to make sure that there's fire service to all that street, to Point Street, to all of Washington, and all the homes around there. Is that understood? That's what we're talking about. We don't care about those parking spaces out in front of my house. Those cars sit there and sit there and sit there. People come and go out of that apartment building. Uh, and that's okay. That's what happens in apartment buildings. But I've seen, you know, bloody baseball bat fights. I've seen the, the meth people that lived over there, the drug dealers. I've had to work with the police to, to help me with that building. So I, I want to make sure that you're not making concessions to somebody who doesn't live there who just has a, a rental unit there. We live there all the time, and we want to make sure that we have adequate fire service. We deserve that here. We expect that here in Eureka Springs. We love living here, and I've loved redoing that house at number eight. But I want to make sure that the fire department can get to it, to anything around there, right? Yeah, so I stand with the fire department and the chief and the marshal and whatever they first recommended, about 60 feet from either side of the, the intersection of Point Street, the middle of it, 60 feet. Now you've changed that to something different. So I just want to make sure that you're, you're thinking about it from the fire department. That's who we're supporting. We want our houses safe and secure. And that's what I'm here to say. Thank you for your time. Chris. 
Dear members of the City Council, I'm here tonight to speak about a tree cut permit request advancing to the Planning Commission meeting tomorrow night. The request is to remove the majority of trees on three residential lots, a total of 61 trees. At their last meeting, the BZA suggested postponing their review until a site visit could be scheduled and stated that the HDC should review the plan for the buildings first. Tree cut permits do not require notification by mail to any neighbors and was quietly listed for public notice on the city's website indicating the agenda item. I attended and spoke about my concerns for reviewing the impacts this tree cut would have upon the increase of stormwater discharge onto the gravel surface of Fuller Street, several adjoining private properties, the Cardinal Spring Rain Garden in Harmon Park, and the culverts and ravines heading to Leatherwood Creek. The BZA did not make a decision on the permit request. The HDC, however, last week approved plans for two residential buildings to be constructed. Nine adjoining property owners were notified by mail of this level three hearing. Three adjoining neighbors expressed concerns and lack of approval for the applicant's plan and no neighbors spoke in support for the plans. I am concerned about how the city is reviewing applications and their content as permit requests move between the city's commissions. The R1 Victorian Residential District purpose states to protect and enhance the value and character of the area, the city mandates that all future development be subject to land usage and dimensional review by the Planning Commission and architectural review by the Historic District Commission. Why is the Planning Commission not reviewing this new development and a full consideration of compliance with the Municipal Code? The Building and Construction Code clearly states that a grading plan is required on residential lots presenting an average slope of more than 20 percent. My calculations from the submitted plan indicate that slope presents an average of a 30 to 35 percent slope. I am concerned that this important aspect of plan review is not proceeding. As the mayor has mentioned, a sustainability initiative for the city and the planning commission begins to engage the concepts of low impact development approaches for improving our stormwater discharge issues, I would recommend and request that the City Council help improve and clarify the current process for how site plans for extensive tree removals and required grading plans are submitted, reviewed, received public input, and are faithfully followed. Fuller Street is an unimproved gravel, gravel road descending through a forest. It has no sidewalks, no curbs, no modern Amenities, in fact, it's only had one home built adjoining its roadway ever. That was well over 100 years ago. Shouldn't we approach adding new homes to this situation as carefully as possible? Shouldn't we make sure the plans are comprehensive in order and satisfy our code? I think so. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council people. Again, my name is Judy Montgomery, 56 Vaughn, Ward 1, 33-year resident. I am so amazed. Is the young lady still here who spoke first? She left. Oh, yeah. I am so amazed and impressed that she said so eloquently exactly what I have been thinking and talking to people about with regard to adding, 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 adding new agenda items. If it's not a true emergency, let's wait. You all meet every two weeks. Some of us are geek enough to read those agendas, okay? We read them. We respond accordingly, either coming or talking to our friends, talking to other voters. So please, let's, let's quit that practice unless absolutely necessary. My second remark is to say, thank you, Mickey, for bulldogging this, and to Mr. McClung, who's absent, for speaking quietly and succinctly. Leave the Parks Department alone, please. Thank you. Thank 
Carrie Mary, 52 Wall Street. I wish I could read um, my points without a paper, but I can't. I too want to thank Council for keeping level heads at the last meeting when faced with a possible motion to dissolve the Parks Commission and make it a City Department. I was actually quite astounded that this would even be put in front of Council. It was only a few meetings back when a public comment was made about an observation by this individual of the perceived lack of trust in our town. This person did not have the answers but asked Council to seriously think how to improve that image in our town. This past meeting was doing anything but that. Words like collusion and hinting at misdeeds that do not exist only feed into the national psyche of mistrust that everyone is operating under in our country and apparently in our small town. Thank you, Mickey Schneider, for pointing out how well the Parks Department functions. To Terry McClung, who's not here, for stating the obvious, since when does partnership become collusion? I especially want to thank Mayor Barry for his comments about the fact that we live in a very small town, how lucky we are that smart, capable people are willing and able to serve on multiple boards and commissions. Thank you also for pointing out the level of committed, passionate volunteers that are involved in the parks and trails. I would like to see more thank yous and less whisperings and criticizings and to truly see an attempt to foster trust and put forward to the community the good works of so many. I especially want to thank our Head of Parks, Justin Husp, for persevering in all of this. He has a huge job. He juggles a great deal to keep Mark's Parks moving in what has been a t very toxic atmosphere. I can't wait to see what he accomplishes when he's no longer dodging so many bullets. And I um, know the community center had a fabulous um, attendance and I couldn't go, but I too want to remind everybody about the opening of the new downhill bike trails on June 14th at 10 a.m. It's a huge deal. There'll be lots of people there. It's very exciting for our town. And I thank you all so much for all the hard work you do. That's it? Oh. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your public comments. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, our next item will be new business, will be uh, budget cleanup resolution. If I can get a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. All right. You should have in your packet uh, the 2017 budget cleanup resolution with uh, the changes as uh, requested on there. Yes, ma'am. I have some questions. Um, it, it seems that we're taking quite a bit out of the street fund and the water and sewer fund at a time when we need improvements in both. Um, it, is there some reason that we need to do you that? You do realize this is a cleanup. This has to do with the budget of 2017, the money oh, bill okay. spent. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments? Can I get a motion to assign this uh, resolution a number and, and read for? So moved. Second. Okay. <coughs> read for approval. I didn't get to finish oh. it before she. I make a motion that we give this a number and read it for approval. Second. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Any discussion? Ms. Green? <coughs> yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Five zero. The resolution number will be 730. Resolution amending the 2017 previously adopted amended budgets for the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas for the year 2017, appropriating money for each and every item of expenditure therein and for other purposes. Whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas has determined that it is in the best interest of the City to amend the previously adopted amended budgets of the City and whereas certain anticipated revenues and expenditures did not occur as previously budgeted. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas that Section 1 This resolution shall be known as the Cleanup Amended Budget Resolution for the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas for the year 2017 and the attached 2017 budget documents present the actual revenues, expenditures and appropriation adjustments for the period Section 2 that the amounts for each expenditure 
classification and the amended budget are hereby approved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and they are hereby authorized and appropriated for the purposes set forth for the calendar year ending December 31, 2017. <coughs> for the general fund, the 2017 mid-year amended budget number was $3,361,165. It was an increase of $153,668 and leaving a balance of $3,514,833. In the street fund, the amended budget number was $731,500. There was a decrease of $96,696, leaving a balance of $634,804. For lot fee, the amended budget number was $283,300. There was a decrease of $5,055, leaving a balance of $278,245. Capital fund, the amended budget figure was $427,101. There was a decrease of $87,287, leaving a balance of $339,814. For debt service, the mid-year budget number was $1,305,900. There was an increase of $36,512, leaving a balance of $1,342,412. District court automation, the mid-year adjusted number was $6,235, and there was an increase of $1,575, leaving a balance of $7,810. For the Fireman's Pension Fund, the mid-year adjusted number was $98,452, and there was a decrease of $11,563, leaving a balance of $86,889. In the Water and Sewer Fund, the mid-year adjusted number was $1,531,426 and there was an increase of $225,110 leaving a balance of $1,756,536. In the transit fund, the mid-year adjusted number was $1,387,689 there was a decrease of $295,596, leaving a balance of $1,092,093. The totals then were mid-year adjusted $9,132,768 and an overall decrease of $79,332, leaving a balance in revenues $9,053,000. In appropriation, <coughs> that is expenditures, for the general fund in 2017 mid-year, the adjusted number was $3,359,864. There was a decrease of $71,492, leaving a balance of $3,288,372. In the street fund, the mid-year adjusted number was $628,893. There was a decrease of $187,591, leaving a balance of $41,302. In lot fee expenditures, the mid-year adjusted number was $282,500. There was a decrease of $977 leaving a balance of $281,523. In capital fund, the mid-year adjusted number for expenditures was to have been $404,804, but there was a decrease of $210,141, leaving a balance of $194,663. For debt service at mid-year, the adjusted number was $1,000,000. $269,418 and there was an increase of $148,466 leaving a balance of 
one million four hundred seventeen eight hundred eighty four dollars district court automation <coughs> the mid-year adjusted number for expenditures was four thousand dollars however there was an increase of two thousand eighteen dollars leaving a balance at year end of six thousand eighteen dollars for the fireman's pension fund the mid-year adjusted number was ninety four thousand two hundred forty dollars <coughs> there was a decrease of one thousand four hundred forty nine dollars leaving a balance of ninety two thousand seven hundred and ninety one dollars in the water and sewer fund the mid-year adjusted number for expenditures was one million five hundred twenty seven thousand four hundred eighty four dollars however there was a decrease in expenditures of ninety four thousand two hundred and fifty five dollars leaving a balance of one million four hundred and thirty three thousand three hundred and twenty nine dollars two hundred thank you one million four hundred thirty three thousand two hundred and twenty nine dollars in transit the mid-year adjusted number was one million two hundred forty six thousand six hundred and twenty seven dollars however there was a decrease in expenditures of one hundred twenty three thousand four hundred thirty six dollars leaving a balance of one million one hundred twenty three thousand one hundred and ninety one dollars the totals then mid-year adjusted anticipated expenditures were eight million eight hundred seventeen thousand eight hundred thirty dollars with a decrease in spending of five hundred and thirty eight thousand eight hundred fifty seven dollars leaving a balance of eight million two hundred seventy eight thousand nine hundred and seventy three dollars Thank you, Madam Clerk. All right, our next item of business is uh, we've got ordinance to add planning, planning proposed changes to code. So moved. Second. I believe we're still uh, waiting. We need uh, to delay that one more time. I did not get it quite finished. All right, are we getting close to it? Yes, we would have been finished if I had not been ill this weekend. Okay, so you think we can have it uh, for the next meeting? I believe so, without a problem. Okay. Can we get a, somebody to make a motion to yeah. defer this to June 25th? I move that we postpone it until the city attorney is ready. Okay. Get a second. All right. I need another motion. Yes, I move that we approve... <coughs> The changes for the next meeting, uh, June 25th. I'll second that. All right. Uh, okay, we're going to defer this, is what you're saying, until the June 25th. Yes, please. All right. And please get well, Tim. Uh, all right. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so moved. All right. The next item is the resolution for the moratorium on the B&B &B conditional use permits. So moved. Second. All right. Uh, Mickey? Um, I think we had some confusion and misunderstandings because this was added on at the last minute at the last meeting, this part, this uh, moratorium. And I'm holding in my hand right here the minutes from the last planning meeting. They ha or the last couple of planning meetings, they haven't even had a chance to discuss this, which basically means if we go ahead and act on this now, we would be going strictly on the planning chair's desire and not on the whole planning commission's discussion, research, whatever would be entailed. Like so I think we just had so much stuff going on with them, we got it all confused. This needs to be separate and it needs to go before planning commission first. Let them have their discussion come up to their decision on what needs to be done and then they can present that to us. Ms. Green? Um, the chair of the planning commission I think was here to speak as the commission and I think they have been pretty upset that it's been a year that we haven't done these codes and, and the public asked us tonight Mr. DeVito was one of many that asked us to get these codes changed and I think all they want is a moratorium on any new CUPs issued and then as soon as we do these codes yay or nay they would like to have it off. 
Mr. Thomas? Um, I have the same concerns that Ms. Uh, Mickey just expressed. Uh, and also, uh, there's some terminology going on because I hear you saying Planning Commission is very concerned. They want this. The, was there a vote to request the moratorium from City Council by planning at the Planning Commission meeting? No. Not that really I know. not. Then I would suggest that it's inappropriate unless the Planning Commission votes to bring something to City Council for us to act on it. Mickey. Well, that, that's yeah. Basically, that's just exactly it. Jay, would you like to make a motion to defer this? Yeah, or? I make a motion. We defer this until Planning Commission has thoroughly discussed and reached a decision and turned it over to us. If we don't do that, then all we're doing is. I understand. I'm, really, I'm asking for the motion. Okay. Do I get a second? on deferring this until the Planning Commission has reviewed this and forwarded it on to the I'll City Council. It. That is your motion, I yes. understand. Yes. All right. All those uh, in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Was there discussion on that? I thought we were having discussion. I'm sorry. Oh, there was a motion and a second. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I skipped it then. Okay. I just... <laughs> I was Forgive me. Let's go ahead and go back to discussion. Okay. okay. I'd like to just do it the way Robert's rule says it's supposed to be done. Uh, I would like to amend Mickey's motion simply to void last week's council vote for this resolution since Planning Commission didn't ask for it. If they ask for one in the future, fine. If they I don't, fine. I don't see, I think we're confusing the issue. Let's just re, let's if defer this. If we don't read it, it doesn't pass, right? We just defer it. Okay. We'll, come and wait and we'll defer it until they come back with something. This is not a valid, nobody's accepted this at po this point, so there's no need to amend your ordinance. Okay. Uh, sorry, Ms. Kendrick. I, can, I continue to be concerned about the encroachment of CUPs into our <coughs> residential districts, and I think this is an attack on affordable housing and um, among many other attacks that are happening in this town, and I, I would like to proceed with this moratorium. Uh, Mr. Mitchell. Yes, sir. I, I'm just going to make a, a request or an opportunity. We have a planning person sitting here, and he may or may not want to enlighten us on anything that may have happened in planning in this, and I'll give him the opportunity, and you're certainly not under obligation to say anything unless you feel like it. You, you want to pass? Okay. Just <laughs> want to be sure. All right. Uh, Ms. Snyder. I would like to ask our city attorney, is it legal for the council to pass an item that has been represented to come from planning when in fact it has not come from planning? The city council can act at any time on its own motion. If you are acting because of a motion brought by someone else that you later determine not to be correct, then you also can act in the appropriate way there unto. So if you do not believe that it's planning's desire at this time to do this, you could follow Ms. Kendrick's amendment and vote still in favor of the moratorium, but it would not be at the recommendation of the Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. Or you can reject it and send it back to the Planning Commission asking for their guidance or their um, enlightenment of what their wishes are before you act. Point of order, I did not make a motion. Please you use the word. If you did not, I've stand to I believe order. I said that I was, uh, I was speaking to the motion to defer this and stating that I was opposed to that. I believe that's the position I took. Okay. All right. And I would like to... I'd like I'm to continue my question. Just a minute. Ms. Snyder. So, with the city attorney saying, as the council, yes, we can, but no, we have not gotten the proper authoritative legal word from planning. We're only talking, waiting until the next meeting because they will meet in between now and then. They can clarify, and therefore, we will have it at the very next meeting on what their desires as the commission is. I know what the commission is supposed to do because I've been on there, what, four or five times. 
they had not completed this one part like I said there was confusion and it was erroneously put before us as they voted on this and no they have not to me that means that we are acting out of order Ms. Gray um, I worked on that and the new codes that we have somewhat uh, eliminate or make it harder to get a CUP and I know if I was still sitting on there since it's taken so long it's taken a year before we're even looking at this stuff I don't think it's inappropriate for a moratorium the last moratorium we put on the, was not brought by planning it was brought by the City Council and that's when Mr. Mitchell made the challenge to us to change the codes I don't think it's an inappropriate thing I would like to point out that the last meeting there was no representation uh, to this council that um, this that my motion for this moratorium was at the request of planning I clearly stated that it was the uh, request of the head of planning so I think Ms. Snyder mischaracterizes our discussion in the last meeting as, as misleading Ms. Schneider. We all got an email from Ann Sally saying yada yada yada, okay, which is what your thing was that you brought up. We all agreed to this. As I have found out since, no planning commission did not meet, discuss this, make a decision, and vote as it was more or less put to us. I have no problem in acting on this my problem is that we have been it has been misrepresented and to cover our financial butts we can wait two lousy little weeks and hear from planning that's all I'm asking any further discussion all right we got a motion to defer this until uh, we get the planning's recommendation can is that basically the motion can we have the motion restated because I kind of lost what it was. By I now. think I just did. Oh, you did? Uh, <laughs> the motion was to defer this until the Planning Commission gave us their recommendation. Uh, it should be like next meeting. All right. Uh, there are no further comments. I'd like to amend that motion to that uh, the motion as it stands, but that uh, until the next meeting, June 25th. No second that. Okay. Got a motion to amend them uh, to our next meeting. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, approval of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm no. opposed. No. Do I hear two? Three, two. Three, two. Three, two. Um, I vote aye. That makes it 4-2. Okay. okay. So now then we're back to the, basically the motion is for the, give it back to the Planning Commission for the recommendation. Yes. All right. Point, point of clarification, just to help me right now, so this is important. The mayor can vote in the case of a tie, but he can also vote to, to pass something. I, I just need a little help understanding that. So I can vote in the, in the case of a if it is a tie, it's a vote in the positive. He can vote, vote to, to make pass. A pass. Okay, yeah. just want to be sure. So I cannot. If it was the other way around, I couldn't vote. It wouldn't just make any difference. Like to be clear and totally All right. understand. Thank All you. All those in favor of the original motion, sing by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So maybe we'll go back to the planning commission for this. All right. Our next item of business is. Uh, Update on appraisal for 25 North. Motion to discuss. Second. Uh, I had tried uh, two different appraisers. Uh, Julie Arnold, uh, who was the first person to recommend, is now in Centerton. Uh, she said that she could not get to this for two months. Um, and she gave me the name of another appraiser in Berryville, Angela. Can't think of her. Used to work for, for Julie. Uh, I finally got a hold of her. She wasn't returning my phone calls uh, last week, and I spoke to her today, sent her the information. She called me back and said that uh, 
she regretfully uh, refuses to be able to do the work because uh, she's too busy. So I'm now forced to probably try to find another appraiser either out of uh, Harrison or Springdale Rogers to come over and, and give us an appraisal. Eureka doesn't have its own? What? We don't have our own appraisers? No. Wow. Well, we have someone living here who works for an appraiser in Rogers, uh, but I don't think he would do the work either. Okay. So that's where we stand on that. Thank you. Ms. Green? Could we, um, I know when people a lot of times sell a house, they'll have three or four real estate agents come with comps and give their opinion. Would that be acceptable? I think for the city, we need to get in a professional okay. appraisal. Okay. Mr. Mitchell? I, I, I understand. Do we not have another appraiser in town? His name is Bill Featherston. I, don't, I have not contacted <laughs> Bill, but I think Bill, uh, in this case, might seriously have a conflict of interest. Okay. Hmm. And I'm not sure he would do it. Well, I, I can understand him not wanting to do it. I have not. I have not approached Mr. Featherstone. But I, to, to not approach him would would would. Let, I, let me go ahead. I'm. I'm. Thank Bill you. works in Rogers, so I'm going to have to contact other appraisers anyway. Thank so you. Let me go ahead and do that. All right. So there's no further discussion on that. Uh, we'll go ahead with the resolution in support of the pension review board. Rule number four. Get a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. I think you have in your packet. Uh, this is uh, just a standard resolution that has been given to us. Uh, is this a new one? We number. just need to change the number. Right. And Madam Clerk, would you explain what's happening on that? Yes, uh, 727 was assigned to a different resolution. So if we could just agree to have the resolution for this, the number for this be 729, we can go forward with this. I move to accept the resolution with a new number at 729. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of changing the resolution number from 727 to 729? Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Uh, all right, that brings us to uh, <laughs> the black vulture issue. Um, I was asked by uh, Alderman Snyder to bring this up the last time. We received a petition from numerous citizens uh, wanting something to be done about this. Uh, council discussed this in 2015. Uh, ultimately, and I've talked again with the, uh, the state about this issue. Um, one of the items that uh, has to be done is we also have to get, uh, if it's up to the council on how, what they want to do about it. But we, city cannot do anything since it's also on private property. So, Ms. Snyder. Okay, um, several years ago when this came before, I did extensive research then and we were informed that our hands were tied. I have again done extensive research and it's not so much that our hands are tied as we have a people problem. And I know there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to be happy about this, but we cannot get the experts to come from state, game, fish, whatever, from the various entities um, that came before because of the way they were treated. And I'm talking about by both employees of the city and local people living here. They were treated horrendously. They refused to come back here again on this situation. The studies that have been done in the last three years prove that this vulture problem with the excrement and everything else is a health issue. We're going to have to accept that. It's hurting our people, it's hurting our land, it's hurting our visitors, it's hurting our trees, it's hurting everything. At the same time, no, we're not going to go out there and kill all the vultures. But we do have to deal, and they have come up with a couple of other ways to do things. This being a health situation, it can be dealt with by the experts. 
It doesn't have to just be the people, although there is a lot of stuff that the people can do <coughs> um, you know, on their own property. So that doesn't stop them from being in the trees around your house. And this vulture situation is actually expanding, not just from our what we thought was our one little area. It's actually expanding now all the way out to Holiday Island. The growth is unbelievable because of the wildlife that we have and the animal life. They're drawn to us. They like us. We have all the chicken plants in the county around. So this is a perfect place for them to have as their central location and then poof out and do eating elsewhere and then come back here to roost. And it's causing a lot of severe problems for us. What I would like to see us do, there's a couple of people that are willing to give us a chance if we treat them nicely. Um, and believe me, I understand. We don't want to kill animals at the same time. We don't want our people to die. We don't want our people getting sick and having problems. And this is what is going on. We don't want our water ruined. I mean, my God, we're the water city, you know. We've got to deal. We've got to do something. We need to get a couple of experts in there. There are a couple that we can contact who will give it a chance. We can have, whether it's, you know, a workshop for the community, a town hall type workshop thing, or if they just come and talk at a workshop with the with the council, and of course public is always invited to that. You know, whatever you want to do, but we have got to talk to somebody and get something going on because we are going to start being their fodder if we don't. Um, if you have questions, we have various areas. Chris knows about the tree part. We can talk to him. Um, you know, he can give you a couple minutes right now if you want. But it's affecting everything all around us, and it is spreading. So we need to do something. This is, we've, this is like the third time that we've tried to deal or started to deal, and we've gone, as usual, nowhere. Now it's critical. We have to do something. Mr. Mitchell. It was nice to hear from Ms. Snyder that the vultures like us. At least there's somebody that does. But what I'm concerned about, it, we're not concerned about, was the Madam Clerk today sent out a very nice reference article in regards to the vulture issue. And then buried in that was one great sentence that some people had used. And that was, it didn't kill the vultures, but it caused them to not want to roost. And it was laser lights. And I would encourage the, the people that are close to this vulture nesting place right now to give consideration to that. I think the lasers that was mentioned in the article, Mickey will remember, was about an 800 foot. You'd obviously yeah. want to be very careful that you didn't aim it up into the sky in case there was airplanes or the helicopter flying by or something because that would be very dangerous, obviously. But it's, it's potential. I don't know what laser... Uh, lighting of, of that uh, magnitude would cost but I, I think it is, is something that sh could be considered uh, and possibly uh, the, the owners of the property could also look into on their own and might help solve the situation. That's it. Ms. Kendrick? Um, I don't believe that this is a citywide problem. I do think that there is our laws that are especially developed for these purposes and um, they permit um, citizens to create districts um, for health, public health and welfare purposes. They're called public health and welfare improvement districts. Um, and they could, um, the people who are affected by this could band together and create this um, it's a, a governmental district and they could tax themselves if they wanted to and part of this is that the um, the governing authority is uh, two members of the governing authority I, I assume the council that means the council and three residents or owners and um, I would think that maybe Ms. Schneider might be an appropriate person to um, spearhead this but I will be happy to provide anybody who's interested with the um, statutes that permit those people to create such a district and I think that would be the appropriate way of handling it. Further discussion? 
Mickey? I'd like to get the experts in here from the area and talk with them and see if we, you know, what the options are and how viable we might have to go the way Christy said. We might not have to. Let's get the experts in, let them look at the area and then talk to us. You, what was your, what were you wanting? I'm sorry, your first part I didn't understand. Um, let's, let's call, um, I believe their names are, oh, no, I can't remember the second one. It's Olivia and um, somebody else, but they're like on the far side of the county and they are willing to come and look at the bird situation. So do you, do you need Green? a motion to contact yeah. them? I've got the info at home. Ms. Green? Um, I like both Christy and Mickey's. One of the things that I read today, I read a lot on vultures, is if we find why they are congregating in a spot, what, what, their, what their reasoning is, and, and the experts can tell us that, we can work at eradicating why, what they're congregating for. And, and there's something in that hollow that is attracting them. There's lots of other places they could be. So both, both ideas are good. All right. So I make a motion that we have the mayor call. I'll get the name and number for you. And you call and make an appointment of do we want a, a town hall or do we want a workshop? Uh -uh. Well, you, it's up to the council what, how y'all want to approach this. Let's start with a workshop for us. I mean, is that a motion? N no, well, I think she hadn't made not, her. Nobody's yeah, not quite yet. <laughs> not making a motion not at yet. this point. Uh, we're discussing how to handle this. Mr. Mitchell? Do we really need to make a motion, or could we just ask the mayor to, would he consider doing it and just leave it at that if he says yes? Well, I'd like to have all of us hear from the um, officials. That's what I'm saying. Do we want to make a workshop so they can look and then come and talk to us, or what? I don't talk to experts, mm -hmm. but I'm not. We, it's council needs to make a decision on how they want to handle this. Well, that's what I mean. It's a private property issue, uh, one issue, uh, and there are several different ways of handling this. Now it's up to the council on how they want to do it. Well, that's what I mean. Miss Kendricks, I don't think it's appropriate for the council get, to get involved in this. If the property owners want to form such a district, they're welcome to do so, and Miss Schneider can help them all that she wants to. But I don't think the council ought to get involved in this or the mayor. Ms. Snyder? This is a city problem because they're all over the city even though they are home basically in one big spot. But it is affecting our tourism, our tourists, our visitors, our income are wading through this stuff not realizing that makes it a problem for us. And all we're doing is talking about being the spearhead to have an official come and talk so we can understand and pass it on to our people that we represent. Ms. Snyder, if you want to uh, form a committee and, and contact these people I don't think and, and come up with a committee and come that. up with a workshop and discuss, give us the council some solutions. I don't think we need a whole committee. I think we need you to call on the, the expert, make an appointment, and then they can come and tell all of us. We can get together either on site or in a, in a workshop and have them tell us. Ms. Kendricks? I would like to make a motion that the council does not get involved in the vulture problem. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. All right, discussion. Okay, Ms. Snyder, I mean, yeah, yeah Mickey? I make a counter motion. Now, the that we have the mayor do it and we talk about it because we represent our people. I'm sorry, the motion's been made. Well, I made a counter motion. Ms. Green? Well, I, I agree with Butch and Christy. Mickey, I think it would be good for you to start a committee, make a couple of phone calls, come back to us, and then we can go from there. This has been on the agenda five million times or in the last several years. The people need and want action. We represent the people. Why is it so hard to have the mayor, who is the head of the representing of the city, to call the experts, say, we promise we will not be rude to you like we were the last time. Would you please come and look and give us some options? Why is that such a hard thing for this council to do in regards to representing our people? Ms. Green? Um, 
could we, could you, Mr. Mayor, call somebody and ask them to come during our meeting and give us some solution, a quick, you know, maybe synopsis of a solution? I think we know the three solutions. Okay, well, I wasn't. No, here. they've come up with a lot of good new stuff. The solutions I heard from Mike Hoyle today, who's in charge of the state, uh, you can either do the do noise eradication. The, the laser lights may work, they may not work. That that's, remains to be seen. That's also an expense that somebody's got to buy and, and do. Uh, or in the case of uh, down at Greer's Ferry, they actually killed one vulture uh, to scare him away. And hung it. And that was the three solutions that he had. Um, and, and he's also so the one who I won't think come. what we're doing is we're trying to figure out if there's another solution. I don't know there is. I have not heard of another solution, Ms. Snyder, unless you know of one. Well, like I said, they've got a bunch of stuff, but Hoy is the one who won't come because of the way he was treated last it, time. He won't come because he tried to set off the, the cannons the last time, and after one time, <laughs> after one day, was basically told not to show up again. And that Rudely. was, uh, I'm not sure when that was. Uh, it wasn't 2015, it was even earlier than that. 2013? So, Mr. Thomas. Well, I'm just comfortable with the understanding that this is a private property issue and the neighbors need to get together and, and try to work out a solution. But I would hope that <coughs> Ms. Kendrick would withdraw her motion because I don't really like a vote that we're not going to get involved. You know, it's it's not city business, but I just don't like the vote not to get involved. We just need to let it drop. I think it's basically the same thing. But no, that's okay. I don't think so. I agree. Would you? Him. All right. Well, we've got a motion. Is there further discussion on the motion? What was the motion, please? Madam Clerk? <laughs> to stay out of it. The council, does, the council doesn't get involved in it. And the mayor. I believe I said and the mayor. And the mayor. Okay. All right, any further discussion on that motion? All those in favor of the motion as stated, sing five or saying aye. Aye. Any of those opposed? Abstain. Me. <laughs> I'm not sure, did you... I'm going against it. I'm opposing. So it's two, two, one, two, two, three, basically. Well, no, because an abstain, abstention is a nothing. It's a, no. it's a, it's a no place vote. to not vote. It's a no vote. Counts as a no. Not exactly, but okay. So it, I mean, <laughs> it counts as a no. It counts as a no vote in essence. Um, so I mean, I can't vote on that. So, uh, is there another motion? I make a motion that we drop the issue. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All right. Ms. Snyder? Yeah, I was going to make a motion that we have you call Olivia. <laughs> no, the motion is to drop the issue. Let's, let's get through discuss this that. You can. All right. <laughs> There's no further discussion on that. Now let's have a roll call. <laughs> Ms. Schneider? Nope. Mr. Mitchell? Abstain. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Three, one, one. And that was to... Drop it. Was Drop to the issue. Okay, I'll... I'll Sorry, Citizen I can vote Reed, aye on that. I'll vote aye. All right. Okay. Four, one, one. Uh, that brings us to our next item. Um, the Ellis Grade re uh, Retaining Wall. Mm -hmm. Get a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Uh, before you, you have a wait ordinance a waiving the requirements for competitive bidding for the repair of Ellis Grade. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, Ellis Grade was number three of add-ons. Number eight. It's number, number eight. eight. New business. 
there was two other ones too. Yeah, we had tax, we had the agenda, and no, those are in right. finished business. No, they're not. Oh, no, they're oh, not. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's agenda and Ellis. Okay. I'm sorry. I put them in the wrong spot. I didn't. <laughs> okay. Did I get a motion? Motion to discuss, to discuss a Lake Leatherwood tax. Yes. Okay. Second. All right. Mr. Mitchell? Yes, I wanted to bring the attention of Council the information that was contained in the memo of synopsis of Municipal League opinion on City of Eureka Springs Park Commission questions, question number four. The administration of the Leatherwood sales tax by City Council versus the current administration by Parks Commission, ACA 14269205, Commissioner Use of Funds, and ACA 14.269206, Commission Reports, Audits, and Funds are both attached. Response from Municipal League. I have attached the Lake Leatherwood sales tax ordinance. The ordinance does not specify who controls the funds, but presumably only the City Council can control the funds by budgeting and appropriation. And additionally, the Parks Commission only controls the revenues derived from the operation of the parks and those funds appropriated to it by the City, Arkansas Code 14269205206. However, because this is a sales tax for a specific purpose, the city is legally obligated to only use the sales tax for the reasons stated in the ordinance. Specifically, the city must use the sales tax for funding, parentheses, capital improvements at Lake Leatherwood City Park, maintenance at and of Lake Leatherwood City Park, educational and recreational programming at Lake Leatherwood City Park, in accordance with the approved Lake Leatherwood City Park Master Plan, see attached ordinance. Thus, the City Council does control the fund, but the funds can only be used for those purposes relating to Leatherwood City Park. Ultimately, the policy decisions of funding the Parks Commission is up to the City and only can be addressed by the City Council. So in reading that and thinking about it, I got thinking about the fact that we need, obviously, by municipal code, that parks complies with the uh, listing in there that they supply uh, their budget on a quarterly basis. But uh, what I wanted to raise for council for discussion, and it is discussion at this point, is since this definitely the city council controls the fund, should city council consider that the Director of Finance consider having a dedicated fund that the Lake Leatherwood City Parks tax goes into. It's under the jurisdiction of the Director of Finance since it, there is a City Council control and as Parks wants to access that fund for specific issues as outlined in the Municipal League, etc. for Lake Leatherwood, which would include when the Waltons give over that land and it becomes part of Lake Leatherwood, it would include those trails obviously for anybody that's concerned about that. But that by thinking about the Director of Finance controlling the funds in a separate dedicated account, it allows parks to uh, access that money based on the use at Lake Leatherwood. And this is, was for discussion. That's Ms. Schneider. Point. Okay, I'm thoroughly confused. You as the mayor, do you know who signs the checks for stuff at the park? Is it Lonnie or is it Justin or? I'm, I'm sure, I think it's going through Justin, the Parks Department, similar to what the CAPC is. Okay, so in other words, their income goes into their account, he writes it there, there, This fund is goes into a dedicated fund for Lake Leatherwood that Parks. Justin would then write a check. It's a separate, it's separate account that's for this tax. Okay. So I'm confused, David. Do you mean that you don't want him writing these checks anymore? Is that what you, I, I got totally confused. No. I just read the Municipal League that City Council controls the funds. I raised the question, should the, the dedicated fund be under the control of whom now 
basically oversees the finances of this city and, and what and pro provides information to city council and that's the director of finance still wouldn't cut off parks from accessing it it's just that the account would should it be under the direction of the finance director or not uh, as we as we look back over the financial records that have or have not been provided to city council despite what's in the municipal code and the fact that I think once when we did see one there was no breakdown of, of the uh, those accounts so if there is a separate fund that, that that tax is going into then we would definitely need to see the set of books for for that to do the due diligence of what the municipal league says here very clearly that we're supposed to be doing that was my question or concern Ms. Snyder um. Okay, this is going to lead into the next topic. We needed a heads up on this. Can we have the finance director come to the next meeting and maybe have the parks director come to the next meeting so these questions can be asked of them and we can hear and weigh responses? Sure. I would make a motion then that that's what we do. Second. In discussion? Mr. Um, I just would like to point out that this is hardly the first time this issue has come up. We're talking about having the two people come before us. Yes, and, okay. and what I'm talking about is I don't think that the fact that the City Council has to appropriate the Lake Leatherwood funds is a new agenda item. It's been discussed for months now at this point, on and off. Um, I agree um, that the we ought to have reports um, showing the di um, the dispersal of the well first of all I don't think that the Lake Leatherwood funds ought to be dispersed without the City Council appropriating the funds which we haven't done um, I do think they ought to be kept in a separate account and that parks ought to be um, reporting separately on those funds as opposed to the funds which are under their sole jurisdiction and I admit are under their sole jurisdiction which is the parks fund which comes from the revenues of the park so I'm, I'm asking that um, that yes the council take a much more active role in administering the Lake Leatherwood account Mr. Thomas first of all I want to point out that we're not faulting parks or city council or we're faulting them equally neither city council knew that we were supposed to be doing this and parks didn't know that we were supposed to be doing this so I would say yes bring in Mr. Clark because he knows how to set up the separate line issues he can give us that information he can tell us how best to handle city council oversight of Lake Leatherwood tax funds Mr. Mitchell uh, I agree with Mickey's statement and I make a motion that we has we defer I this agenda this I think we already I, have yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. who made that? Mickey? <laughs> and I seconded it. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm yeah, I, I woke up. <laughs> do we have any further discussion? If not, all those in favor of having uh, <laughs> Mr. House and Mr. Clark come before us next uh, next council meeting. Sing by sing by by saying aye. Oh, aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, so moved. All right, that brings us up to uh, the uh, discussion of uh, agenda items. Move to discuss. Second. Mickey. Okay, I never thought about it, and I kind of doubt that any of us really thought about it. But it's been called to my attention, and when I did stop and think, I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, we have gotten really, really, really slack in regards to adding new stuff to the agenda. The whole point of laws being there saying you know how it's got to be published X amount of days ahead of time and everything else um, is so the people that we represent know what's going on and they have the time to contact us, email, call, or come to a meeting. By adding crucial things especially that need discussion or need input from the people, by adding those to the agenda, they aren't getting the option to speak up and this is totally wrong 
Now there are times when we have an emergency situation like we did at the last meeting and you have to do it. That's not the problem. It's a whole lot of the stuff that, well, we forgot to two weeks ago, so I'll bring it up now because I didn't get around to calling the clerk. You know, we have to stop that. We have got to stop that and start giving our people the chance to be aware, hear, speak. Thank Ms. you. Green? Usually what I have seen in the six months I've been on here is when we add something to the agenda, nine times out of ten it's for discussion. It, nothing happens at that meeting, but it gets discussed, it gets put into the paper, and people can come. Um, I, I agree, you know, some of these things that we kind of vote on maybe without a discussion could could use this, but I think we should be allowed to add a discussion on something. Mr. Kendricks? Um, I agree that we shouldn't really be adding um, agenda items unless it's an emergency at the last minute, but what I find um, actually that uh, council tends to do even more often, which is just as if not more disruptive to people, is we take items off the agenda um, at the meeting. So people who may come to council um, to discuss something find, um, at, you know, at, at a half an hour into the meeting that it's not going to be discussed. And so they keep on coming to one council meeting after another as things keep on getting deferred. So I think it is if we are going to um, you know, become much more aware and more careful about adding agenda items. I would also like to see us, um, when we put out the agenda, make sure that the agenda <coughs> item is actually going to be discussed that night um, or, or indicate on the agenda that it's going to be deferred. Ms. Snyder? Um, we, when we do the agenda at the very beginning of the meeting, that's when we remove stuff. So I guess I don't understand what you're talking about. Um, but in regards to like setting up the agenda, the stuff in regards to what Melissa was saying, at the last meeting, the vulture issue came up. We could have put it on the agenda right then, but look at all the people who wanted to speak or contact us that couldn't. Had we talked about it then instead of putting it on this next agenda. That's why we need to do it because, you know, there's so many things that we've got to let them know. We've got to give them a chance to speak up. And just because we discuss it at one meeting doesn't mean it's going to be discussed again. Mr. Mitchell? I'd like to ask the attorney what the Roberts rules are specific to adding things to the agenda at the meeting and, and just a little bit of legal uh, clarification of Robert's rules since we adopted them. Please, sir. General principle of Robert's rules is that an agenda is supposed to be your roadmap by which you conduct the meeting. But it does allow for that roadmap to be corrected or changed at a uh, appropriate time during the meeting. So it can be changed either to eliminate or to add a particular matter if the body so chooses to do so. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Kendricks? Um, I would just say an uh, example of things that we defer um, over and over and over again is here on this agenda and that is the um, ordinance to add the planning um, proposed changes to code that has been on the agenda for a very long time and continues to get deferred but yet the citizens do not know until they come to the meeting whether or not it's going to be deferred. It would be very helpful to citizens if they could be given notice of that when the agenda is sent out. Mr. Thomas? I'd just like to add to Mr. Weaver's comments that when you change the agenda you have to actually vote on it so instead of instead of just having a first and a second to add or remove something from the agenda you actually have to have to take a vote it should be a two-thirds majority but in our case it's still a vote of four so anytime somebody wants to add something to the agenda it would have to be a vote and I think that would slow down the additions and the eliminations Mr. Mitchell? I, I, I agree with 
Mr. Thomas, and, and maybe if we strove to to vote for agenda items added and or deleted, that would possibly clear this situation up and still meet what our attorney has advised us is the Roberts Rules way of handling additions or deletions. Ms. Snyder, I mean Ms. Green. Um, I agree both with Bob and David. I think that would be a good way of, you know, making us at least think about it. I think some of this, we were live for so long and when we would add things, people had a chance to kind of come down and we're no longer live so they don't really know anything until the next day. So maybe Mickey does have a point that maybe we should wait on some things. Any further comments? Uh, one more. I, I just think we, sh I think we should defer this item um, to the next meeting for to put on the agenda for discussion. That way the public will know. <laughs> for discussion of the change of item? Well, you can put it on, yeah, whatever. That, that way. We, we just discussed it. I know, but you <laughs> we want. We want to be good little people. That's all yeah. we're going to do. Yeah, we're <laughs> going to put it on next week or next meeting. Mr. Thomas? Um, I don't think any motions needed regarding a vote because basically we just need to follow Robert's Rules of Order. It's already there. Okay. We've just been ignoring it. Mm. Three votes to put on, not two? Pardon? That's in Robert's Rules. Three votes, not two? No, not three. Oh. I, it's, okay. Uh, to add an item <laughs> to the agenda during the meeting requires a two-thirds majority, but it's still the same, that four it, votes. Okay, now you're saying during the meeting. Is that at the beginning when we... Correct. That's okay. During the meeting. I think it does take a motion because it's something the council has to do, and it's a council's recommendation. Uh, if this is the way that you want, want, the council wants to vote on each amendment or each addition or deletion, I think the council needs to make that because this is the council's body. It needs a motion to have that happen. I make a motion we follow Robert's rules of order. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ms. Kendrick? I believe we already have an ordinance to that effect on the books that we vote on the first of the year. All right. Well, we'll continue on. Then all those in favor, sing five and saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. All right. Uh, next item of new business is uh, Ellis Grade. Re uh, so moved. Retaining wall. Second. <laughs> uh, we have before you an ordinance. Uh, this is uh, comes before the council because the uh, estimated cost is over twenty thousand dollars, and would normally need to be put out for bids. We have been working with the owner, uh, who is, uh, and the reason it's taken so long to get to get to this point is to make sure the owner was uh, agreeable with the cost of the work. The owner is paying for half of the cost. Uh, and we need to get this done, of course, as soon as possible. Uh, and uh, the owner has agreed. He agreed last week with the, uh, the cost uh, of the wall repair. And so this is a total project cost. It's not our share. It's a total cost. Mr. Mitchell. Will you answer the question? It's the total cost, but we're assigning an ordinance, and then you're saying that he's going to pay half of it. Where and did I see? Did I miss that in the ordinance that the owner's paying half of it? Because it looks like the way the ordinance is written that we're paying for it. Well, must be missing something. We have a uh, another ordinance, I guess. Uh, that states that he is paid, he's responsible for half of the wall, half the cost of the wall. Separate from this ordinance? Separate from this ordinance. Why couldn't it have been part of this ordinance so it's all clear? Yeah. Mr. Weaver? You want to help me out? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, we have an ordinance, so we have a law that includes that we will pay half <coughs> and that the owner will pay half. But should the owner fail to pay for their half, 
we would rely on a lawsuit on that ordinance to bring them into compliance. Not on this ordinance. This ordinance would require the city to pay the cost of the repair and then seek reimbursement through our previous ordinance. Did, did you write this ordinance? No, sir, I did not. I, that's what I thought when you answered that question. This came before us t tonight, or today, yesterday, I guess, actually, uh, for this. Uh, Mr. Weaver, do you have a suggestion on to satisfy Mr. Mitchell's concerns? Do I have a proposal that would say we put in half? No, because we don't have the owner sitting here. Uh, Ms. Kendricks? Um, I missed the, the meeting in which this was originally discussed, but I, I saw the paperwork. Um, what is the urgency uh, on the part of the city that this get done? Uh, if we don't start work on it, the rest of the retaining wall could fall down. Okay. I don't know if you've been by Ellis grade lately, but it's uh, the uh, stone has fall, fallen. And then, and, and we are we are contracting to pay the twenty one thousand with um, Ozark Stone. Is that it? Um, and our only options, if the owner does not pay his half, is to sue him. Is that correct? I believe that's that true. Now he has agreed, it, according to the last or the ordinance that we have, and the. Uh, document that he is responsible for half the payment. I, I have a problem with our the city contracting to pay the full amount if the city is only responsible for half of it. I well we have to we couldn't waive the bid. I'm not suggesting because we have to the, the total project cost is over twenty thousand dollars. Doesn't matter who's paying half and who's paying what. Oh, so I'm we are having to waive the bid I have no problem that. with that. My, my problem is with um, the city uh, entering into a contract to pay the entire amount when the city is only liable for half the amount and if the owner doesn't pay the other half, we would end up having to pay the entire amount and do, sue the owner. Do you have a suggestion? Uh, certainly, you have we a could, solution? Um, certainly we could amend, we could add more language to this ordinance which provides that um, that the city only enter into a contract for half the amount and um, that it be contingent upon the owner entering into a contract for the other half. Mr. Weaver? Should we do that and should the emergency portion of this be that the wall comes down in the meantime the city's cost may be inflated by a factor of 10 or 12 or more times. I hazard to guess that the six by nine foot section is however fixing yeah, sure is exactly. less than by far one tenth of the size of the Ellis grade wall. It's probably less than one twenty fifth. Mr. Thomas? I'm just if uh, the owner didn't pay, there could be a lien put on his house, correct? Correct. Okay. And then we would have by, to foreclose by... By, by hmm. not us. Then. Certainly by us. On what basis would we lien it? Because they would owe us half the money. We would have to get a judgment and file the judgment to create a lien. Only the contractor could lien it. Um, I'm not, okay, you may be correct. I'm not sure, Mr. Weaver. I'm just I don't know of any lien powers that the city has um, in, in this instance. Mr. Mitchell? I, I, we wouldn't have to have this ordinance, and we wouldn't have to uh, go through a lien. I'm not too sure. It'd be interesting to know how many liens the city attorneys put on property for debts that's owed us. And if the gentleman lives in the house 
I don't remember what his age is or so, but let's give him 20 or 30 years at least. Uh, obviously, we're not going to collect our money until he sells it. And I, we wouldn't have to even waive the requirements for competitive bidding if this thing had said that we had half of it, because then it wouldn't have been over $20,000, and we wouldn't have needed to have the ordinance in the first place. As the total project cost is over 20000 according to state paid. law. The court of state law, it says the total project cost. It doesn't matter. Was it doesn't matter who pays for what. If the, the breakdown doesn't matter. If the ordinance we're writing says that we are paying 10500 whatever number of dollars to repair this, and then the owner is, 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 is doing his part, I'm, I'm just, I am not comfortable with signing off that we're paying for the whole thing and then we're going to rely on liens and various other mechanisms. That, that, that's just not setting well. Ms. Schneider? Um, just some background information first. Has the owner been talked to about this? Yes. And yes. has he assured that he has the 10750 He's very happy with what's he, going through he, with this. I mean, that's not going to be like he's going to. Okay, then why can't we tomorrow morning meet with you or the city attorney, whichever, meet with the owner, have him sign? Because the owner is in Little Rock. So. <laughs> okay, so you can email me. <laughs> I don't care. Get in touch with the owner, have him sign. A thing saying he will come up with the 10750 that's half of this number. And it's a contract. He signs it. Therefore, rather than a lien on a house, we'd have definite legal standing if he would not do it. But this way, it gets it covered. It gets it done because then the very next day or whatever, we can immediately start work. So our butts are covered, and we have good legal action if he screws up. Mr. Attorney? I don't know that having him sign anything would necessarily put us in any better position than we are right now. Based on the old ordinance, he is responsible for one half of the cost. city is responsible for one half of the cost. A legal action that could be brought would be brought on that ordinance. You could add a count if you create a additional new contract for violation of the contract but I don't do think that it would get you any further than the old ordinance because the ordinance was passed at the behest of the property owners at the time. Mr. Thomas? I don't know this gentleman at all, but if he was sitting here saying he wasn't going to pay it, the city would still, it would still be in the best interest of the city to get this thing fixed. So just go ahead and fix it and pass this resolution, the ordinance. And the bill. Ms. Green? Well, I agree with Bob. I've watched that wall. Um, the last time we had a hard rain, a little bit more of it came down. And boy, if we have one more hard rain, probably a whole lot more of it's going to co come down. It's going to cost us a fortune. Plus the gentleman, I'm sure he is going to pay because if it doesn't get done, his house is going to go down Ellis grade. So I say, let's get it done. I believe this man, is Mr. McKimmy, is an honorable man. I want to get it done so that we don't cost us any more money. Can I get a motion? I move that we assign this uh, ordinance a number and read it by title only. No, I have to read it, read it for passage. For read, it, read it for passage. Yeah. Second. On first reading. For the first On reading. the first reading. Sorry. Second. Okay, discussion. All those in favor, sing five or sing aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. 4-1. Oh, I haven't voted yet. Oh. I'm, I'm adamantly opposed <coughs> to this, but I'm going to go ahead and vote yay. 4-1. Okay. The ordinance number will be 2267. An ordinance waiving the requirements of competitive bidding for the repair of Ellis Grade Wall. Whereas the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, having been informed of the need of Public Works Department regarding the re required repair 
and reconstruction of the Ellis grade stone wall, and whereas the repair and replacement of the stone has been given a guaranteed cost by Ozark Southern Stone of $21,484.38, and whereas Ozark Southern Stone is the only local provider of such services and material to repair and replace the Ellis grade wall. Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, Section 1, that pursuant to the provisions of Section 3.04.02 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code, the Council of said city finds that this, being an exceptional situation in which the procedure for competitive bidding is deemed not feasible or practical, competitive bidding is specifically hereby specifically waived and the Public Works Department is authorized to engage the services of Ozark Stone Properties, Elk Ranch, Arkansas, and Dexter, Missouri to repair and replace the retaining wall of Ellis Grade in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Uh, get a motion to approve. So ordinance. moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor, sing five, saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Aye. <laughs> okay, four one. Yes. Well, wait, did you? I'm sorry. I, it, did he vote? I voted yay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Against my will, but I did it. I get a motion to, yes, ma'am. Mickey. I make a motion reading the ordinance by number, by name only. Ordinance number 2267. By name only. Suspend the rules. And suspend the rules to do so. Second. Okay. Discussion? Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ms. Kendrick? No. 4 1. Ordinance number 2267, an ordinance waiving the requirements of competitive bidding for the repair of Ellis Grade Wall. Okay, you need a motion to approve the ordinance 2267 on second reading? So moved. Second. Discussion? Voice is okay. And all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? No. 4 1. All right. Mickey? This being a dire emergency in regards to one more drop of rain will bring the wall down, <laughs> I make a motion that we suspend the rules for the ordinance number 2267 by title only. For its third reading. Pardon? For its third reading. For the third reading, sorry. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kendrick? No. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. 4 1. Ordinance number 2267, an ordinance waiving the requirements of competitive bidding for the repair of Ellis Grade Wall. Okay, so now we need motion to uh, approve. approve the uh, ordinance 2267 on its third reading. So moved. Second. Okay, discussion? Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? No. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. 4-1. Okay. Ms. Schneider? I make a motion that we read and accept the emergency class ordinance number 2267. I'll second that. Discussion? Ms. 
Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. Schneider. Yes. Ms. Green. Yes. Ms. Kendrick. No. Four one. Emergency clause section two: the due to the need to ensure the health, welfare, and safety of the citizens of the city, an emergency is hereby declared to exist and this ordinance shall take effect upon its passage by the Eureka Springs City Council and signing by the Eureka Springs Mayor. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think that brings us down to uh, Ginger City? No, no, I'm finished. Finished. no, I'm finished finally. You wish. Oh, I'm finished. I go, all right, we are. Yeah, I'm skipping <laughs> over that one. All right, we get a motion to discuss Washington Street parking. So motion. moved. Discuss. Second. Uh, we have before you an ordinance that uh, came before that was agreed upon and worked with the uh, fire department and the fire marshal and uh, one of the two of the property owners up there. Yes, ma'am. This is, is this one of the ones that we had last week, one of no. the two? No. Okay, no. that's all I need to know. Thank you. No, this ordinance goes from, does not take into the consideration of parking to the north of Point Street. Okay, and to continue. This is only from the south part. Okay, and to continue, I have checked with both police and fire and they had a very very good meeting police fire building inspector and bill the property owner they all got together they worked together a miracle and they weighed all the various options and it turns out there was actually a third way that this could be solved not Jimmy's, not Nick's, not Bill's. It was a totally new way, and by working together, they came up with a very good situation that everybody is happy about. That's how it should be done. That's it. Well, where is it? Mr. Is Mitchell? <laughs> is this it? Yeah. Yes, I, I do know for a fact that the fire marshal and uh, the chief of the service, so what my question is, since neither one of them are here, to to discuss this and based on the fact that the, the fire marshal still had at the last meeting some concerns and had made a recommendation I am wanting to at least hear from the mayor since he's the one that's presenting this forum that this is a culmination of the chief of the fire department in conjunction with his fire marshal and the appropriate support personnel police building inspector and uh, that this is their recommendation and it was my understanding talking to Bill on two occasions since the last meeting that there was also some other suggestions and discussion that took place on Point Street that there was to be some specific issues that Dwayne Allen was supposed to have completed that were part of Fire Marshal Kelly's suggestion. There was supposed to be some signage at the start of Point Street. There was supposed to be some signage at the turnaround. There was supposed to be a harder surface at the turnaround at the end of Point Street. There was supposed to be some yellow striping on what parking spaces would be left in front of number 8 Washington and number 12 Washington so as to designate specifically for the cars that are parking there so that one doesn't take it all up because on occasion if you look up at 12 Washington the people there park a particular vehicle in such a mode that you can only get one vehicle in two spaces because of the way they park. Likewise in talking with Bill there was also the discussion that possibly if Dwayne Allen would take a look at that parking space in front of the witch's hat which is on Bond Street as you first start down it on the right hand side they can usually get two cars in there then it turns into an open ditch that if it was tied into the culvert that was there under those two cars would provide two more parking spaces for a total of four that would then give 
four parking spaces on Vaughn Street, two in front of eight, one at Bill's house, and two in front of, uh, of 12 Washington. So the parking then would be four, five, six, seven, eight, eight to nine cars, which is an increase in parking. But I don't see that. So I guess I'm going to ask the mayor if, uh, if based on what he's heard since the fire chief is not here, is are the rest of those items going to happen if this ordinance is uh, going to be passed? I don't know anything about the Bond Street parking. I think that's totally separate. I had not was not uh, given any information on that or any agreements by Dwayne or anything else. I can find out. <coughs> the rest of the items along uh, Point Street uh, is something that uh, Dwayne is going to be doing that's within his capability as public works director in uh, making sure the uh, turnaround is paved and, and uh, the signage is taken care of and the other items that were discussed by uh, Fire Marshal Kelly. Okay, because right here it just says painting with red, so, but that does include this the is a, This is only, that's because this is the only thing the ordinance requires is for the city council to approve mm -hmm. striping and painting the curb red. The uh, city council doesn't have to go in and approve uh, signage or any of the other information, but that is what uh, fire marshals is requiring. And Mr. Kelly, I mean, uh, Dwayne has agreed to, along with uh, Bill King, to t make sure those are done. It, with the exception of the Vaughn Street. I don't know anything about that one. Okay. Other comments? All right, get a motion to assign this a number and read on its first reading. So moved. Get a second. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of assigning this a number and reading it for uh, on its first reading, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The ordinance number will be 2268, an ordinance to amend ordinance 1845 restricting parking on a portion of Washington Street, whereas due to increased use of the streets and parking in the area, and whereas some emergency vehicles require extra clearance room to maneuver, and whereas the public works director, fire marshal, building official, and police chief have reviewed the situation. Now therefore be it hereby ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas that the city of Eureka Springs does hereby amend Council. section city council of the city of Eureka Springs does hereby amend section 4 subsection CC to read as follows no parking shall be allowed on the west side of Washington Street extending 82 feet from the corner of Summit Street to the center of the intersection with Point Street section 2 that the mayor is hereby directed to see that proper striping of the curb is achieved with red paint within a reasonable time period. Section 3. All provisions of the ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed and all other provisions of the ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs not in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance shall remain in full force and effect. Section 4. Severability. Should any sentence, paragraph, clause, phrase, or section of this ordinance be adjudged or held to be unconstitutional, illegal, or invalid, the same shall not affect the validity of this ordinance as a whole or any part or provision thereof, other than the part so decided to be invalid, illegal, or unconstitutional, and shall not affect the validity of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code as a whole. I get a motion to approve the ordinance uh, 2268 on its first reading. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. All right. Uh, now, I think that takes care of all our business, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, agenda setting. Ms. Snyder. Um, wait a minute, i got to go through my notes and find it. Never mind. Okay. All right. Anyone else? <laughs> Sorry. 
Okay. Now, hearing none, uh, City Council comments. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mitchell? Uh, yes. yes. You know, it's that time of Agenda. year in Eureka Springs when we start identifying that it's time to start running for positions on City Council and the Mayor, City Clerk, Attorney, etc. <coughs> and it's coming up. I'd like to encourage the citizens, especially those voting in this town, to give very careful scrutiny and consideration to the candidates that are running and to not be swayed in any one direction by platitudes, campaign promises, campaign slogans, but instead look very careful at the candidates that are running, look at their background, look at the various things that are going on, look at their character, and be very careful if those are the people that you want sitting at this table or, as in the case of the mayor, standing up there as the representative of this city in total. You want a candidate, and I'll just go ahead and say it, much like Butch Berry goes out and does things and stands up there for this community, he is representing all of us. He is the, the spearhead of everything that's being done. And that's what you need to be looking at very carefully. You may not want somebody that puts nefariously done bulletin boards or billboards outside the city. That does pretty well slam the city, its economy, and various other things. You want people that are standing up for you, the economy, and what goes on in this city very carefully. At the start of this year, back in about January, I mentioned to the uh, administrative assistant to the mayor that I felt very strongly that I had served city council. This is my third term unopposed. And I firmly believe that a position like this has an expiration date and a shelf life. And I feel very strongly and have felt at the time that I mentioned it to her early in the year and have on several other occasions since then that this will be my last year. So position one, ward one, position two is officially open, wide open. So I encourage all of you, rather than sitting on the sidelines being an armchair council member and critiquing everything that's done there is get up, go get your applications, and apply for a position and run. It's very easy to be critical, but you know what? It takes a lot of guts to get up here. It takes a lot of guts to stand up, and I highly recommend that some of you give serious consideration. Several of you are here right now from Ward 1, so come on. My position is definitely wide open. Don't have to worry about me. Is that it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Ms. Green. Well, well said, David, and I wish you all the luck in the world. I wanted to just bring up the first woman that spoke, uh, spoke about the parks member we put on at the last meeting. <clears throat> I knew nothing about him applying until I sat down here. I thought he was a good candidate. If we would have waited till this week, I still would have voted for him. I don't believe any commission should have the right or any city council person should have the right to decide who sits on with them. That's we're diverse. That's what makes us good is having a lot of ideas. And some of what David said, one of the things I don't know who's running here. I'm not even sure if I would run. But sometimes when you have continuity, like a mayor who I have high respect for and my council members who I have high respect for, they put ideas out. And those ideas, when you have a continuity, come to fruitation. When you don't have a continuity, you get a lot of new ideas. And it's not that they're bad. It's just that they only last two years. And then, bing, it's another bit. So <coughs> consider all this. And really, in your hearts, if you want to run, I applaud you. But really, really consider it. Because it's, it's not fun and games up here. 
And just on a lighter note, I volunteer at the Humane Society thrift store. And the other day, Mickey, this came in, and I got it for you. <laughs> your own plug. Your own little um, okay, plastic guys. bag. Plastic yarn. <laughs> These are some of the things you can do with plastic bags. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. I That's thought it was awesome. cute. Yes, I appreciate that. <laughs> cool. I thought of you. <laughs> See, get it together, people. <laughs> are you done? Yeah, oh, I'm, yeah, okay. Um, to go along with what Melissa was saying, I wanted to tell Tracy that um, when it comes to filling seats on a lot of the commissions, when somebody's already been on, we don't take two weeks to call and discuss and find out kind of person. We know because they've already been on, so we automatically, I would like to renew their seating. Um, if it's somebody we all know, as in the case last week, we also do it then. When it's someone that only some of us know or that we don't know well or we really want to think about it, that's when we'll go ahead and give two weeks. Um, most of the time, we know the people and we're just so glad to have somebody volunteering. So there's that part. Um, <clears throat> I did want to do an update on Dave in Hawaii. Now this is from a week ago because things have gotten really hairy. His house is now, as of a week ago, one block from the lava flow. Dave Heidelman? Yes. Yeah. He is doing well. He has saved his uh, VW bus with our parades and all of his critters. He is staying with a friend through tomorrow and then another friend the end of June. And after that, as he puts it, who knows where any of us will be. So it is now within one block of his house. But he's doing fine. Um, <laughs> if you can call it that, I kind of wish he'd just load up his truck and his animals and move home. So there's that. I want to congratulate Joe Gunnels on his major win on his tour bus thingy. That that's just he he got a super major award for tourism. That is so great. The community center last weekend was phenomenal. It was a Saturday during the season. And you heard her. Her yes, him, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 250 people. They ran out of food. That doesn't happen in this town during the season on a Saturday. Everybody's working their tails off. 250 people, and they were not retired people like me. I mean, you know, that's what you would think. That's just, well, the retired people. No, it was every age. The kids had an incredible time. I was very jealous. They got to do that huge little slide, and I never did make it. Kim, did you make it? No, she didn't either. They wouldn't let us. We were too big. The gym looks awesome. The whole thing is great. Um, as you can see, I am a founding member because I believe in community. There you go. Here's my shirt. You can still join. And what's really neat about the glass block, when they tore down that part of the school, all of my kids called, all well, five out of the six, called to say, grab me a block, grab me a block. I got these for all of our kids. Well, now I've got the official one with the little name thingy on there. Mine's better. Anyway, it was great. Anytime they have stuff going on, y'all, you really, really, really need to go. And the mayor actually did a very good ribbon cutting speech. I was impressed. <laughs> Other than that, I have birthdays. This is what, June? This is way too early to be that slam, but my sister, my marine son, my brother-in-law, all three are a week apart. My two girlfriends, one in Moscow, one in Australia, two days apart from my kids, my family. It's been a very busy week. So Jeremy, Greg, Mary, Anya, and Janie, happy birthday, everybody. That's it. That's yeah, it. Thank you. Mr. Thomas? Nothing to say here. Ms. Kendricks? I have no comment. All right. Uh, I've got a few comments before we, we close. Uh, I want to remember all the citizens that uh, we will begin construction on the uh, Flint Street Tunnel uh, Actually, starting today, they started blocking off some areas and starting some uh, 
delivery of, of material in through there. This is a 30-day project, so it hopefully we'll get done quicker than 30 days. Uh, and the uh, 11, 6, 15, we have music in the park uh, with Selwyn Birchwood Blues Fest from 5.30 to 7.30. On the 16th, uh, Bricksfield will be playing from 3 to 5. And on the 16th, also, the Dancing in the Park by Melonite from 5 to 7. On the 16th, this is going to be a lot of fun, uh, Coco Montoya and Carolyn Wonderland Blues Festival here in the auditorium starting at 8 p.m. On the 16th, we got the Father's Day Blues uh, out at Turpentine Creek from 1 to 6. And on the 22nd, it's that time of the year for Opera in the Ozarks opening night. It's their 68th season. So congratulations, Opera in the Ozarks. They've got some great uh, opera going on this year. And uh, if you've never been, it's a great opportunity to go out and see it. On the 22nd, also, we'll have the Jetaway Southern Tour free performance. 7.30 here in the odd. Jetaway is a music performance school in Little Rock. And they're coming up and uh, we'll be performing here in the auditorium. And that's all I have for right now. Get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. Thank you all.